All right, Merry Christmas to everybody. Hope today is everything you hope for and that you're just having a great time. And so glad that you have joined us on this Christmas day. We've got uh, Larry over here playing bass. We've got Pastor Ben joining us on the djembe. And uh, we've got Rachel here singing and Tammy, of course. And then we've got Chris over there on piano. So that's fun. So anyway, we just wanted to sing just a few songs for you this morning, and uh, I'm going to give just a brief message, and uh, so we're just going to have a really nice time this Christmas day. All right, are we ready? Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh 
Well, we celebrate the beautiful one today, beautiful Jesus. And we're going to do another song about him. And this is uh, uh, One Night in Bethlehem. And this has become one of my favorites this Christmas season. And uh, it goes through my head a lot, i got to say. So uh, if you know it, just sing along with us. So divine has come God come to live with us Words away here to stay timeless one one night in Of a world made right, and choirs bright, stars and light. What wondrous sights! One night in Bethlehem, songs that the angels play as the stars sing. child meek and mild where he lay in heaven's glory sleep in the stable peace and good will to man hope joy will come Messiah come, the work begun as shepherds way One night in Bethlehem Songs that the angels play As the stars sing to light Well, on this Christmas Day, I want to bring a message to you that's entitled, A Time to Rejoice. And this is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, and very familiar to many of us, but I will read through some of this. And here we go, verse 1. 
At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. So remember, a, a manger sounds all nice and cozy. And I don't know, it may have been, but it's also where the animals ate. That's what they ate out of, was uh, a manger. And so, you know, there, there was probably straw from there, uh, but it was no germ-free environment, uh, as you can imagine. So we continue on, verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Now, the Jewish people had for many hundreds of years been looking for the Messiah. And uh, this was someone who would save them and rule over them. Uh, and this is since the times of Isaiah and Jeremiah, uh, the 8th century B.C. And if we look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now I want to talk about the shepherds just a little bit. And, you know, the shepherds would have been well aware of this scripture. And they must have been thinking, what did we do to deserve what is happening to us today? The privilege of seeing the Messiah when he's born. I mean, what an incredible thing. Who are we? You know, we're just a bunch of shepherds. Uh, we're dirty. Uh, we're not thought of well among uh, the town. And they must have just thought, why am I getting this privilege? But, you know, I thought about that and I thought, isn't that just God? Um, he oftentimes takes the, the weak, the the lowly, the, the things that you would not expect, and it brings him glory in the end. And that's what happens here. And, and uh, when the angels say that there's been a sign of the manger, uh, I mean, how often are you going to see a newborn baby in a feeding trough? Like never, never. And so that would be the sign. So they would go into the, into the town, the village, and they would go in, and I, I imagine... It wouldn't be too hard to find uh, somebody to say, hey, there's been this uh, lady that uh, was pregnant. It looks like she's about ready to have a baby. Uh, I think somebody would have known this. And uh, so not too hard to find. Um, but uh, that would have been an incredible sign is to go and see. And they saw the baby lying in a feeding trough in a manger. Okay. Verse 13, suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So imagine how excited they must have been. You know, they're going to be the first people to see the Messiah. 
and they had this incredible visitation by angels, so they knew this was something absolutely spiritually spectacular, and they're told about this, and, and uh, you know, it says in verse 16, they hurried to the village, of course they did, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger, and after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. So, again... Imagine, try to picture yourself there. Everything that was told to shepherds by the angels, it came to pass. Everything happened. I mean, wow. What an incredible moment in history this must have been for these guys. I'm sure they were wondering what kind of child this person was going to turn out to be. And I'm sure they watched from a distance as much as they could uh, and of course, I would imagine that when Jesus began to, uh, he got older and began to do miracles, they could remember, oh, we saw this guy when he was a baby. Now, going back to the Isaiah scripture, he calls the Messiah a wonderful counselor. And the word wonderful here means beyond what we can ask or think. That's wonderful. It's incredible. More than we can ask or think. And the counselor is as a wise king. So here we have an unimaginably wise king. Okay? Mighty God, which is the mighty God is going to be well, like you might think. It's a God of power. Mighty is, is power. He's all powerful. Everlasting Father. This is the Father of eternity. Okay? And this is describing Jesus. Okay? And he's the Prince of Peace. Now, you may have heard this before, but I want to say this about it. This kind of peace is a it's spiritual harmony that's brought about by, a, by an individual's restoration to God. That's what this peace is because that is the ultimate peace. Because that kind of peace lasts forever. So it's the greatest peace that can come to an individual. Peace with God will bring peace to our souls and peace to our minds. Okay? In John 14, 27, Jesus says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So the world's peace is when, when we have troubling circumstances and uh, those troubling circumstances kind of mellow out. They are eased, so to speak. And... So then we have a temporary peace. Oh, everything's calmed down now. Okay, okay. That, that's the kind of peace the world gives, you know. Or, or if there's war or something, and then, and then there's peace among the nations or who, whoever is um, at, at war. And that's the kind of peace the world gives. Okay, everybody's settled down. Okay, good. Now we can have peace. But the peace that God gives is by his spirit. And that's the kind of peace that Jesus came to bring. And it's the kind of peace that I'm sure the shepherds experienced to some extent that night. When they had a visitation from God, a visitation from angels, and that they were handpicked. Why? I don't know. That's just who God is. That's how cool our God is. Because he picked you. And he picked me. And I still don't understand it to this day. That's how great that he is. So this morning, whenever you're watching this, probably on Christmas Day, let us join with the shepherds who saw the Christ, 
the anointed one, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Let's rejoice for the Messiah, Jesus Christ, has been born. I hope that you guys have a Merry Christmas, and we will see you soon.
Merry Christmas, everybody.